thought of as both smart and pretty. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times the Big Bang Theory tackled serious issues. All of it? I have a Ziploc bag filled with all my old Ziploc bags. <laughs> I don't care, put it back. I like the way I look. Well, I don't. I realize I'm deeply offended. Yeah, now be a dear and get me one of those complaint forms. <laughs> That's it, all of you in my office now. For this list, we'll be looking at moments where this iconic sitcom put comedy aside to talk about real life problems. Since we'll be discussing plot details, a spoiler warning is in effect. Was there a serious moment that we missed? Let us know about it in the comments. Number 10, online gaming addiction. Leonard, guess what? I'm a level three warrior. <laughs> Great. Do you know there are groceries outside of your apartment? Yeah, 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 shh. In modern times, the variety of games and easy access to gaming on the go have made it easier than ever for people to become a little too obsessed with playing them. During season two, Penny gets sucked into an online game when her job and personal life aren't going so well. Flipping the dynamic a bit, we get to see Leonard tell Penny, If a person doesn't have a sense of achievement in their real life, it's easy to lose themselves in a virtual world where they can get a false sense of accomplishment. But even with Cheetos in her hair, she's committed to staying the course on her game. Penny finally relents after realizing she agreed to a virtual date with Howard. Can I interest you in an afternoon of spirited questing, followed by a flag and a veil at yon virtual tavern? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Oh my god, I need help. Although the ending is played for laughs, the episode is still a great example of how anyone can find themselves spending too much time in worlds beyond our own. Number 9. Women in Science Only about a third of the world's researchers are women. Throughout The Big Bang Theory, the show has spoken about women entering and being in scientific fields on several occasions. This includes an entire season 6 episode dedicated to the main cast trying to encourage a classroom of young women to enter the sciences. It occurred to me that it might be much more meaningful to hear about women in science from actual women in science. And uh, I happen to know two brilliant examples who have agreed to speak to you on the phone right now. A couple of seasons later, Amy speaks of how hard it is for women to be successful in the world of science. It's fantastic to see the show celebrate accomplishments like Amy's Nobel Prize later on. And in the field of physics, Dr. Amy Farrah Fowler and Dr. Sheldon Cooper for their discovery of super asymmetry. Meanwhile, seeing Bernadette and Amy dressed as princesses while trying to convey their love of science is another excellent bit of writing. I'm Dr. Fowler, and I'm a neuroscientist. And I'm Dr. rostenkowski Wallowitz, and I'm a microbiologist. The world of science needs more women, but from a young age, we girls are encouraged to care more about the way we look than about the power of our minds. <laughs> Number 8. Social Anxiety People who have deep feelings of fear or awkwardness about talking to strangers may be experiencing social anxiety. Studies suggest that as many as 12% of the population know exactly what that's like. Where did my life go, Penny? One day I'm a carefree bachelor and the next I'm married and driving a minivan to peewee cricket matches in suburban New Delhi. Are you talking to me? This is definitely reflected with several characters in The Big Bang Theory. While Raj becomes selectively mute at different points for several seasons, Sheldon's anxiety about social constructs has been explored multiple times. Can I help you? Forgive me for staring, but you're very beautiful. Raj's season 6 girlfriend Lucy also seemed to have severe anxiety as well. Although the show focuses mostly on geek subculture, social anxiety can affect anyone. I kind of have a hard time around people I don't know. Really? Then what were you doing at the comic book store that night? I've been trying to force myself into situations that I'm not comfortable with. By showing characters we love experiencing these feelings, it gives us a sense of comfort. Our favorite fictional characters can experience the same things we do and still thrive. Number 7. Hoarding 
We would have never expected Sheldon to have an issue with hoarding, but after Amy decides to replace his laptop when it finally dies, Sheldon refuses to recycle the old one. Oh, but he said you can get store credit. Well, no, I, just, I, I don't want to recycle it, and you know, I don't want store credit. But why would Can we you... please change the subject? Okay. After swearing her to secrecy, he reveals a storage unit filled with everything he's ever owned. Welcome to my fortress of shame. I'm sorry, what, what am I looking at? It's basically everything I've ever owned. As Sheldon gives Amy a tour, he describes the anxiety he feels whenever he thinks of throwing something away. It's a feeling that rings true in the real world for those who share Sheldon's inability to let things go. Why do you feel you need to save these things? Well, I'd like to say it's nostalgia, but... Every time I think of throwing anything away, my ears start to ring and I get butterflies in my stomach. Undoubtedly, we all hold on to things we may not need. Seeing someone like Sheldon attempt to make a change is a little inspiring. Number six, body image issues. What's wrong? My picture's all over the internet and I look terrible. No, let me see. Well, that is an unfortunate angle. <laughs> By the time we got to the end of this series, we'd seen the characters go through a lot of transformations. Despite repeated jabs by Bernadette and Penny about her choice of clothes and hair, Amy never felt pushed to alter her outward appearance. But that changed when she won her Nobel Prize and had her photograph plastered everywhere. Raj finds her crying in the bathroom after seeing herself in print. Amy's a character who's always been proud of who she is. You should be proud of this moment. I know I shouldn't care about how I look, and I never thought I did. It, it's stupid and shallow, but I just can't help it. So when we see her so distressed about her body image, it's heartbreaking. It's yet one more prime example of the show giving us real-world insecurities we can all relate to. Dr. Amy Farrah Fowler. Wow, Amy, you look amazing. Thank you. Number five, divorce. Deciding to end a marriage is never an easy decision. Having to live through the consequences of it are something else entirely. On Big Bang, we got a chance to see how several of these characters handled the news of their parents splitting up. Leonard learned of his mother's intentions with a quick offhanded comment. Oh, speaking of fathers, Leonard, that reminds me, I'm divorcing yours. <laughs> What? Yes, he was cheating on me. Uh, no! Yeah, with some waitress from the university cafeteria. Can you believe it? Raj got a phone call about the bad news. A Jedi class. <laughs> if you're cool being the only adults there, they said they are. <laughs> Dude, my parents just split up. Both take it to heart, albeit in very different ways. You sure you're okay? I'm okay. You don't look okay. How can I be okay? I come from a broken home. The show does a great job of balancing the emotional impact of divorce while still finding a way to make us laugh. Number four, an absent father. Over the course of the series, Howard has tried many times to bring attention to the fact that his father left his mother when he was a kid. But this event gets highlighted when Sheldon unearths an old letter from Howard's father. Howard, I found this letter from your dad in a box. Now, based on the content, it could either Whoa, be filed open this? Well, I had to find out if it was personal correspondence or memorabilia. Now, as I was saying, based on the no, content- I couldn't be less interested. We get to see Howard struggle with the idea of getting answers after so much time. It provides the audience far more insight into his anger and resentment towards his dad. But where this episode shines is the clever twist they use to give Howard enough of an answer to raise his spirits but still leave room for possibilities. It was a letter explaining that your dad wasn't who he said he was. Eventually, his other life caught up to him, and the only way to keep you and your mom safe was to leave. It's a perfect combination of a tender resolution with comedic timing. Actually, I don't want to know. I want all of them to be true. Well, one of them is. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Number three, inappropriate workplace behavior. Sheldon's always been an intelligent person that tends to miss social cues, but the way he treated his assistant really crossed the line. Sheldon becomes upset when his assistant Alex flirts a little with Leonard outside of work. Yeah, okay. Well, if you want to hear about the lecture, I can tell you all about it at work, or 
you know, over dinner sometime. So he decides to give her a highly inappropriate lecture about workplace etiquette. A woman is like an egg salad sandwich on a warm Texas day. <laughs> what? Full of eggs and only appealing for a short time. Even when he's confronted by HR, he doesn't initially understand what he's done wrong. I meant that all women are slaves to their biological <laughs> urges, you know? Yeah, even you. <laughs> You're a slave. Sheldon's actions definitely deserve to be called out and brought attention to. Although the episode wraps up with him still in need of improvement, it's a story that makes clear what isn't acceptable at work. Number two, fear of being mistreated. How the hell did you get in the building? Uh, we're scientists. <laughs> Tell him about our IQ. <laughs> The idea of being tormented by others is a concept that the Big Bang Theory has never shied away from. From losing their pants to online gaming, and even being physically harassed at a Halloween party, the boys have seen it all. Give my friend his stuff back. I don't know what you're talking about. Well then, good news. Today's the day a girl's finally gonna touch you in your little special place. <laughs> On more than one occasion, the show has taken strides to give us scenes that showcase the long-term effects of being mistreated by others. Leonard's long list of all the things one mean classmate did to him in school shows how deeply he was hurt by such cruel actions. I'm gonna go see him and finally say all the things I should have said in high school. Well, pick on someone your own size. Well, you did not have sex with my mother. <laughs> And yes, I do know why I'm hitting myself. Watching him stand up to someone who tormented him in his apartment with both contempt and fear in his eyes is a moment that feels all too real. I'm not afraid of you anymore, Jimmy. Now get out! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, loss of a parent. For the better part of eight years, Carol Ann Susie played the voice of Howard's mother. After being diagnosed with cancer, the actress passed away. Instead of simply replacing her, the show decided to lay the character to rest. Howard learns of her passing in a phone call at the comic book store. Hey, you okay? No, what's wrong? My mom died. His collection of friends stand there in disbelief as they process it all. During the episode, the most moving scene occurs when Leonard gives a final toast at his apartment. You can see the sadness in the cast during this goodbye. It's not the first time a parental figure has died on the show. Told some great stories about him. Did you know that Arthur's son is a high school son? But Susie's real life passing made it more important than ever for us to stop and recognize her loss. Mrs. Wallowitz, uh, loving mother to all of us. We'll miss you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.